we have a history in this country, really, of bipartisanship on this mm. issue. Um, I mean, Reagan had a lot of support from Democrats in creating the National Endowment for Democracy. Uh, President Carter, you know, his policy on human rights was somewhat divisive, but nonetheless created a certain um, consensus around those issues. And that has continued through the Clinton years and so forth. I think where things got very difficult was in the Iraq case, where it was uh, a kind of an after the fact, after the weapons were not found, uh, explanation, rationale for why we invaded Iraq. It was to bring democracy to the Middle East, not just to Iraq, but it was going to bring to the whole Middle East. And I think that's where we ran into a lot of problems in the way the rest of the world sees us, uh, because it was seen as the U.S. imposing externally uh, our way of doing uh, democracy. And I think that was a setback. I think President Obama has brought it back into a slightly wider context where we talk about universal rights. You know, we talk about basic human dignity and the aspirations of all people to live in free societies. And, I, you know, if you look at polling around the world, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa, it's very clear that significant majorities of people want to live in democratic free societies. So our goal should be to support those movements in a way that leads them, that they're in the lead, uh, we can support them from behind. I want to say one other thing that connects to this and relates to the Soviet Union story, which is the economic development piece. I mean, it's critical, particularly for newer democracies, that democracies actually deliver some kind of economic progress, some kind of uh, livelihood for people. They need jobs. There's human dignity involved here. And so I think that we need to back up our democracy promotion policy with an economic and trade policy and so that states are able to deliver on the promise of democracy.